What's cracking out there, y'all? Y'all already know how this gonna go. It's your boy, 16 to life. Y'all are down. Before I get into this story, do me a favor. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a video, you can hop on it right away. All right, let's get it. So this right here is about when me and the homies from Inland Empire got into a riot with the Damus or the Bloods down there in Ironwood. <clears throat> All right, so for y'all who may not know, the Inland Empire basically makes up two counties, Riverside County and San Bernardino County. And so anybody that's, you know, that's from those counties that live in those counties or whatever in the prison, we all hang out together. You know, that's if you choose to, you know what I'm saying? If you come here, you want to do your own thing then you do your own thing. But, you know, for everybody that run with the IE car, you know, we all ride together. OK, so at this particular time, I had a few homies on the yard that I grew up with. One of them was my homie Kiki, me and his brother Mo went to school together from like day one. I'm talking about head start first grade. Now, Kiki is probably about eight or nine years younger than me. I hadn't seen Kiki since probably about 1994 when I was getting arraigned at my trial. He happened to come there, you know, and later on, I had asked my mom, hey mom, who was, that, uh, who was that little dude back there with the glasses on? She said, oh, that was Mo's brother, Kiki, because I think when Kiki probably was about six or seven, he had moved away and I hadn't seen him in a while. So, okay, anyway, so, there was also the homie down there, the homie Swift, Akil, you know what I'm saying, from Gateway. I'd known him for a long time, too, from the streets. You know, also it was my homie down there, uh, uh, Pee Wee. He go by Gee Wee now. He was down on the yard, too. So, you know, it was, it was a nice little collection of cats that I grew up with down there, which was rare for, for me because, like I say, I'm from a small town. So, anyway, we on the yard. Now, Kiki happened to be in a cell with, a, with another crib from up north named Wino. Um, I think Wino was from, I think he might have been, I don't know if, I mean, I don't know if he was from up north or he was from Fresno, you know, but mid California somewhere. He, I think he was from Six Dudes Diamond. I could be, I could be mistaken about that. But anyway, you know, every now and then you might be in the cell with a weird motherfucker and Wino happened to be one of them weird dudes. Some of them people think that, you know, just cause they in the cell first, the cell is theirs. You know what I'm saying? They want to have whole ownership of the cell. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been one of them dudes, man. We This is the state cell. And we both in this motherfucker together. You know, the same way they move you in, they move your ass out. But like I say, some people, you know, they want to, like, try to, you know, take possession of shit. So anyway, him and Kiki is lightweight bumping heads over some small issues or whatever. You know, dude is a funny bunny type motherfucker. So we tell Kiki, hold, hold up, homie. We're going we gonna to try to find you a cell, you know, somebody to move in with where you'll be more com compatible and more comfortable. So this go on though for about a couple weeks. So they end up bumping heads up in there again. Kiki end up putting mitts on him. Boop bop, boop bop. Kiki bust him up inside there, you know, beat him up. Okay, so then he Kiki find him a place to go. So the shit supposed to be dead and over with. But for some reason, why no, he can't accept that ass whooping, right? So every now and then, when Kiki out there on the yard or Kiki going to chow, he Kiki say he'll look up and the boy be mad dogging him. Why no? So Kiki come get at me. He come tell me, hey, homie, you know, this dude's still looking at me like he want problems. So I tell Kiki, I say, hey, homie, listen, next time he do that shit, come get at me. We're going to go holler at him, you know, because me, I'm more diplomatic. You know what I'm saying? You know, we had some dudes on the yard that was really with the business. You know, we had the homie Vendog, rest in peace. We had Chances. Chances was a cold penitentiary type motherfucker, you know. And Chances, he was about 40 at the time. I think he was 42. Real militant real uh i won't say aggressive but when it's time to push he's aggressive he's very uh you know he's very high power when it's time to do certain shit you know what i'm saying and 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 he also he had a cold little stroll he walked you know like he thought he was tough he worked out all the time and you had a lot of dudes who didn't like that just because of the of his persona but he was real respectful you know address everybody like hey how you doing black man but like i say when you in prison around a bunch of alpha males or people who consider themselves an alpha male, they'll see another dude who thinks he's an alpha male and feel threatened or want to challenge him just to see if he's about what he's pushing. And chances happen to be one of them cats, and he was about that shit. Okay, so, Kiki f make the mistake. He don't come get at me like I tell him. He go get at chances and Thumper and Vindog. 
So they go push up on the boy to holler at him. Now, when they go to push up on him, they strap. They got them long ass, big ass knives on their ass. You know what I'm saying? So they push up on him. Like, hey, homie, what's cracking? You know, get at that nigga. So Kiki said, hey, homie, uh, what's up? You got a problem? Now, Wino, Wino see the move. He see motherfuckers posted up on him. Thumper slide up on him. You know what I'm saying? Vin Dog is, is posted on his flank. You know what I'm saying? So he see, okay, he, he recognize what it is. He already know that, okay, this go bad. It might be my ass out here. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he say, no, I ain't got no problem. He say, no, I ain't got no problem, you know. Okay, so he leave this shit alone. Now, this where the bullshit come in. It was another blood on the yard, a cat by the name of China. He was older too. And... Once he, he see what happened out there. So he come get at Chances. Him and Chances happen to be in the same building. He come holler at Chances a little later. He say, hey, homie, uh, can I holler at you for a minute? So he say, uh, I saw the way y'all approached uh, uh, Wino, man. And he say, if anything should happen, I think it should be just one-on-one. -on -one. You know, but keep in mind, these is two crips. Wino is a blood. So he don't, I mean, excuse me. Uh, 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 China is a blood. So he don't have no business in, involving himself in this whatsoever. Coming up saying nothing to nobody. Because it's not his fight. You know what I'm saying? If they happen to get into it, him or his homeboys ain't just to run over there and help no Crips fighting each other. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, according to prison policy and politics, dude was a million percent out of line, right? Okay. So Chances tell him. Chances say, hey, homie, listen. Uh, No, okay. So China, China, Chances say, well, what you got to do with it? China say, well, you know. I just happened to see it, man, and I, I just thought that, you know, it should be it should be one-on-one. -on -one. You know, he said, if I saw somebody push up on your homeboys like that, I would try to make sure it's one-on-one, -on -one too, which is some bullshit. Chances say, man, listen, so they go, they, they talk for a sec. Chances tell him, listen, man, is you riding with this nigga then? China say, uh, 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 yeah. Chances say, okay, well, when this nigga take his ass to the infirmary, anybody that's riding with him can take their ass right over there with him. You know, China say, okay, okay, so they push off. So now, chances on the next unlock out here in uh, the prisons in California, unlock is what's called like every, whether you inside the cell, in the day room or outside on the yard, every hour on the hour, I think it's like at 115, 215, 315, they, they, they'll open the doors and you can go in and out your cell for about 10 minutes and get the things you may need, you know, books change or go in there and lay down if you want to stay, grab something, whatever, whatever, you know. And then so he, on the next unlock, he sent word to all the homies to come out. So we go outside. Matter of fact, we always had a policy anyway that every morning we all would meet at a particular place and let each other know if anything had transpired the night before. Because, you know, you may get into it with somebody and you think it is cool and that person feel real disrespected. You know, so you come outside to go do what you normally do, and him or his homeboys might be sitting there ready to tear your ass up. And so for that reason, we would come, we would meet in the morning, everybody would just check in, you know what I'm saying? So, so now while we out here discussing the events that then transpired between Chances and, 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 and China, the power go out, you know what I'm saying? So the yard gets recalled, this is about 3 o'clock, so everybody got to go in, we all had to go in. So, okay, so we, so the next morning, we come back out early in the morning. You know, of course, this shit is still brewing. So, a couple of us, me and, and the homie Head, you know, by doing time in Ironwood for so long, like a lot of other dudes, you build rapports and you have relationships with the cats you be interacting with. You know what I'm saying? Whether they be Bloods, Crips, whoever, you know what I'm saying? So, if, if, if sometimes, you know, we'll go and try to resolve the issue or whatever. So, we go get at them. And a lot of them didn't even know. First of all, they didn't even know because, like I say, uh, China had no problem coming saying nothing for no for no saying nothing for no crip anyway. So, but also I think China had some rank in some of these upper prison games. You know what I'm saying? And so they didn't really want to say nothing to him and 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 discipline him like they should have, even if if it was just a verbal discipline because he did, he he definitely was out of pocket, right? So, chances knew a cat named Radical from San Diego. You know what I'm saying? And him and Chances had bonded because Chances is militant. Old boy was militant. They be studying and this and that. So Radical said, hey, listen, homie, we ain't got nothing to do with that. When he talking about we, he talking about him and the San Diego Bloods. Like it should have been. You know what I'm saying? So 
we get a blood, you know, we give them about 30, 45 minutes to come back and holler, let us know what it is. They don't come back and say shit. You know what I'm saying? So at, on the nine o'clock in lot, we all go in. Everybody strap up, get their shit, get their knives, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We come back out. When we come out, we see all the, all the bloods over there. You know, not all of them, but some of them, about 15, 20, 30 over there huddled up in a circle. They having a meeting. You know what I'm saying? Well, we come and sit down on the opposite across him by this building that the homies always sit in front of anyway after the homies go work out. See, that was another thing that they wouldn't own they square. When I say they, I'm talking about the bloods because normally about five or six homies would go over there by the basketball court every day from Monday through Friday. They are burping. Then we have two or three homies around them keeping Usalam on them. Usalam is is is, is a, a Swahili for security, making sure don't nobody run up on them while they doing push ups. You know what I'm saying? Making making sure they secure while they while they working out and in a vulnerable position. So they didn't go do that that day. So like I say, you know the, the bloods they ain't. I guess they ain't even tripping. They underestimating the situation. You know so. We sitting over there, you know, we sitting over there, so we, we, we sitting, you know, they never come get at us. So, about three or four minutes later, you know, we decide, okay, we, let's, you know, they, they probably, they probably supposed to do their shit, so let's, you know, let's, let's take off. So, uh, you know, we, we count to three, the homies count to three. One, two, three, we fly over there, we take off, we run over there. When we run over there, they turn around and see us coming, and to keep it real, a gang of them just take off running. Gang of them get up out of there. They leave and shit. Now, to keep the shit official, they did have a few soldiers that stayed there and was squabbing and doing their thing. One of them, I remember his name was Scully. An another one was this dude I had built a report with on this other yard. We used to play basketball together all the time. His name was G Mike. And so, so they, you know, we we, we do our shit. We squab and we do our shit. The police come up, eventually see it. They come running over there. Get down, get down, get down. So, a little before they do that, I see the homie Kiki is off to the right. He fighting two dudes. He fighting, matter of fact, he's squabbing with the dude China and another young blood named Monster. So, I run over there. I run over there. I get on one of them. So, now here come the police. So, when the police come, when they get right up on us, they step back. We step back. We lay it on down. Because you already know. If you've been to the pen out in Cali, when the police holler, get down, you get down too early, you liable to get kicked in the face, stomped out, stabbed, any old type of shit. So you better not get down. You know, you when you when you get down, you better make sure everything didn't stop or, you know, your safety is, is no longer in jeopardy. So, okay. Now, once everybody get down, they handcuff us, you know what I'm saying, put these little plastic ties on us. We probably lay outside on the ground probably two, three hours. It's like that every time you get caught up in a riot, you know what I'm saying. So, then eventually, you know, they take us to the hole. Now, to keep it real, you know, a lot of them got fucked up real bad. You know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't look too good for them. It was, it was, it was kind of ugly for them, you know. And so, uh, now we in the hole. So, now we sitting back waiting for the paperwork to come. You know, the 115, a 115 in California is uh, anytime you get in trouble, you know, they're going to give you a 115. It's a disciplinary action. You know what I'm saying? They're going to find you guilty, probably keep you in the hole, you know, X amount of time or whatever, whatever. So, we wait, you know, when and due to the fact that the ride is so big and there's so many people involved, you're going to be in the hole at least maybe a month, month and a half just waiting for the paperwork to come. So when the paperwork finally get there, you know what I'm saying? They got every, it's going to have everybody's name, their CDC number, where the police saw them at, what, what they was doing, all this. It's called the schematics. They're going to have all that shit in there. So now as I'm reading through this shit, reading through this shit, you know, I'm starting to realize like they always do. These motherfuckers have told a whole bunch of lies. You know, you had four separate police saying that they had sprayed me with the mace. I never got sprayed saying they sprayed me the homie Kiki, and the two other bloods that we was fighting. So, just out of curiosity, of course, I go check, you know, because now when you when you get sprayed, they got to take you and they got to wash you off. You, they got to decontaminate you, get that shit up off you. And so all that has to be documented. You know, if, if you had any injuries, if you, you know, if you, if you had to get the mace washed off you, all that shit. So I go check the names of the other dudes and, and Kiki too. Ain't none of us had to get no washed off, no mace, because the shit was a whole lie from the gate. You know what I'm saying? So 
I'm thinking, okay, I might be able to beat this motherfucker. Plus another police, he got me, he got me way off some other way. You know what I'm saying? Lance laying down in front of a knife. You know, he said with a knife right up on me. So, uh, so when they finally called me in for my hearing, just so happened, I'm the first person out of these four that they got connected me, Kiki, Monster, and China. Because our, our write-ups is all the same. That they saw us fighting each other. So I go in there, I tell him, man, listen, man, he, you know, he give me a chance to explain. I tell him, man, I wasn't involved in that shit. I didn't have nothing to do with that shit. I was sitting across against the wall, and they started fighting, man. And I just, you know, I since it didn't have nothing to do with me, I, I stayed there and just got out the way or whatever I told him. And the police came. I was in the perimeter. You know, he's like, oh, well, I think that's bullshit. I said, well, listen, man, look, you got one officer. You know, you got four different officers saying they had maced me. One officer said he had maced me. Uh... Three separate times. He first he makes me for a six second spray. I continued to fight. So he gave me another three second burst and another three second burst till I finally stopped fighting. Now this all all the four officers they all basically saying the same thing. I hit Mr. Willis with a four second spray, then a three three second spray, and they saying the same thing about everybody else. So I tell the lieutenant, I said, man, listen, you already know. If they had a mace me like that, I would have been covered in mace. There would have been no way I would have. Not having to get this shit up off me. Because that mace going to be burning the fuck up out your ass. They hit me with it one time. That shit burnt me for about three, four days. I was fighting a motherfucker. And I got him on the ground. He was biting my finger and shit. So when they came to mace me, I didn't stop because I was mad. That's another story I might get to y'all a little later. So anyway. Long story short. The lieutenant find me not guilty. He said, I think you were involved in it. I said, how do you think I'm involved in it? This is after he already found me not guilty. You know, he finds me not guilty. But he tell me he still think I was involved. I said, that don't make no sense. And so that made me mad because now I'm thinking, okay, you you think every black person is involved in this shit. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, long story short, he find all of us not guilty. Because of course, if he find me not guilty, he can't find them, do, them dudes uh, uh, guilty. You know what I'm saying? Which is a, 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 a hard process because normally when you go in there with a 115, if the CO writes you up, the lieutenant is going to ride with his CO and... and, and find your ass guilty you know what i'm saying so they find me not guilty so you know so they take me in there. i'm i'm in there i'm probably in there about two two and a half three months three months by this time three months or some shit so now they take me in there to send me back to the yard they ask me you know do you have any problems with any of these dudes you have any enemies blah 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 i said no i'm good i don't have no enemies i'm good you know what i'm saying so <clears throat> maybe about two weeks later they come get me they take me back to the yard now so now, now they're taking me to B Yard. The uh the riot happened on C Yard in Ironwood. So when they take me to B Yard, just so happened, B Yard is locked down because the blacks and the Mexicans didn't got into a riot about two or three weeks before that. So when they taking me on the yard, I, I'm handcuffed. So now when they getting ready to let me, they take me to the building to get ready to take the cuffs off me. I hear one of the police say, hold on, hold on, don't take the cuffs off you. These two dudes got to be they, they can't be around each other. So I'm thinking, like, who the fuck is he talking about? So they walk somebody past me. It's G. Mike. I guess they had found him not guilty, too, or whatever. Now And they sending us back to the same building, the same cats that we didn't got into it with. I'm like, oh, this shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So they, they, I, you know, they take the handcuffs off me. I go up in the cell. I'm trying to think, man. Because we was on lockdown So maybe I got my property in about 3 or 4 days 4 or 5 days Because you you know I didn't have no property coming out the hole Or I don't know Maybe I don't know But I know I get up in there and immediately I make me a knife Because you know We can have a, um, the big cans of chicken I had the cans of chicken So I took the, the tops off 2 cans of chicken You fold them You know what I'm saying You sharpen it You know you do your thing You hook you know, up You hook it up real proper You make you a knife You know what I'm saying So I made me a knife But like I said earlier me and G. Mike, we had a rapport. We had been on AR playing basketball together probably about three years. So, you know what I'm saying? We had a real cool rapport. So when when they let us out for chow, maybe we didn't come out for chow for maybe about two or three weeks because, like I say, it was, it was a riot between the blacks and the Mexicans. So when they finally do let us out, I seen. I slide right up on him, you know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, this is my boy. We used to be halfway decent, but you never know. You know what I'm saying? Now, and by now, he he didn't got bits and pieces of the story. Well, more, more than bits, bits and pieces. Because like I said, we've been in a hole about two and a half, three months. He didn't heard, okay, this shit was over over one of my homies. And his homie saying something who 
a, a blood who never should have been in this shit anyway. So, you know, I'm telling him, hey, G Mike, you know, uh, you know, your homeboy was out of pocket and woo, woo, woo. He like, yeah, you know what? Well, I'm going to get at some of my homies, man. And uh, more than likely, we're going to let we going to just kill this shit. This shit going to be dead because we got bigger issues with the Mexicans. You know what I'm saying? And he said, plus, you know, our boy was out of pocket. So he ended up hollering at his folks, whatever, whatever. They left that shit alone, left that shit on C yard. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm on the yard. So, so I get at G Mike, right? I tell him, I say, listen, homie. If any of your homies come over here that was in that riot, you get at them, let them know the shit is dead. If any of my homies come, I'm going to get at them and let them know the shit is dead. I'm going to holler at my homies right now. We're going to, you know, let it, so don't nobody be overreacting and tripping. He like, okay, for sure, we're going to do that, right? So now about a week or two, maybe two, three weeks later, I don't know how long it was, I'm, on, I'm getting ready to go play some basketball. You know, I'm, I'm pulling, I got some knee braces. I'm pulling up my knee braces and shit. All of a sudden, a dude come. He say, hey, what's up, chill? I looked at him. I said, hey, what's up, man? I go back to doing what I'm doing. He said, hey, what's up, chill? I said, what's going on, homie? He said, no, what's up? Then, then now it dawned on me that this nigga is doing more than just speaking. <laughs> <coughs> so now I step back. I'm like, hey, homie, what's up? You know me or something? What's, what's cracking? He said, yeah, man, it's me, Billy Bill. Can I get that fade? So now what happened was Billy Bill was one of the bloods on C Yard. He had got he got done bad. He got stabbed up real decent like. And so uh I'm like, yeah, automatic. What's cracking? You know, uh what you what's up? So he said, man, no, well let's go, let's go to the uh to the chapel. But he ain't even knowing I got that thing on me stuck right in my in my little knee braces. You know, and I shit, I don't know what's on, on his mind, you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So one of his homies is right there, or a blood. But this particular blood wasn't in wasn't in the riot. But he said, "Oh man, the chapel is probably closed on whoop de whoop day right today, but it's open later on at such and such a day." So now I say, "Okay, don't even trip. Let's uh, let's go check. I'm a, I'm a, you you know I'm a, I'm gonna walk over there and go check and see what's up. You know I'm gonna go go over there and and, and if it's good." I'm going to call you over there. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go up in the chapel, do our shit. So now I go over there to check. Now when I go over there, now I when I when I get to the chapel, because it's a long walk from the basketball court around the field. Now I when I when I get down there, but it's locked. So I look back toward the basketball court. And and then I, oh on my walk, I seen the homie Snoop. Snoop was in the ride with us too. I tell, hey Snoop, you know the nigga Billy Bill is on the yard and he tripping, so keep your eyes open. You know what I'm saying? So now... When I uh, look back over there by the basketball court, I see now he he's standing kind of like he's pulled off to the side. He's standing with G Mike. He taking his hat off. He doing like this. He pointing. He turning around, pointing at it. I guess telling him, you know, where all he got stabbed or whatever happened. And shit, I see G Mike saying something to him, though. And you know, they talking for a minute. Then he walk off. So G Mike come across the the yard. And he come tell me. He say, Hey, chill. Listen, homie, that was my bad. He said, Man, I seen Billy Bill when he came. He said, but I told him, man, after you get your laundry, come holler at me. He said, I should have got at, got at him immediately, homie, and went and hollered at him. He said, that, that shit is dead, homie. We let him know this shit is over with. I said, well, yeah, homie. I, I said, you know what? I said, well, just let me and him do our shit, homie, and don't and don't involve nobody. But I'm not to tell him what I got what, what I got on my mind. Because I said, because now dude didn't already let me know Billy Bill. He didn't already let me know. He tripping. So I can't be walking around thinking shit is cool and it's all good and let this nigga run up on me and lay me down or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So he he already let me know. He tripping. So now in my mind is nigga got to do what he got to do. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> so uh, G Mike like, no, homie, the shit is squash. You know, that was my bad or whatever, whatever. We got him, homie. This, this shit is dead. We not fixed to kick this shit back up. So I said, all right, homie. Well, I'm, you know. The nigga come around me tripping on me. I, you know, I'm saying it's, it's, it is what it is. You know, he's like, homie, listen, I'm telling you, that's my word. This shit is over. So later that night, about when we, they, they locked us up later that day, I should say, because they locked us up about 3, 30, 4 o'clock for, for, uh, for count and then for, for dinner. So right after count, I hear the alarm going off. You know, the alarm in another building is going off. So, you know. Long story short, come to find out, I guess the nigga Billy Bill 
I don't know what it was. If he got mad and felt his homies wouldn't support him or whatever, whatever, he cut himself all up, cut his arms and his wrist all up and shit. And that's what the alarm was. The police came and got him, took him to the emergency or whatever, to the MTA, which is the medical, and then ended up taking him to the hole. And uh, I never seen the dude no more, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that just lets you know, man, it goes down. You always got to stay on your P's and Q's, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like, subscribe, fuck with your boy, man. It's 16 to life.